So this morning we're going to have a look at how to create detailed bathroom layouts. We have our floor plan, our general arrangement plan, and normally we'll be viewing this type of plan at a scale of 1 to 50 or 1 to 100. And that is useful to a degree, but it's far too small a scale, we could say, or zoomed out to be able to see all of the detail arrangements that we would need in a bathroom. So how do we start to create that? The first thing we need to do is to represent in terms of storytelling, what is the area that we're detailing? And we do this with a detail marker tool. We need to understand what sort of a layout we'd want to place that detail marker on as well. So generally, I would use a, a layer, maybe that starts with something like reference, and I might call that detail markers. And then in some drawings, I would choose to hide that. So if I was creating presentation floor plans, I wouldn't want to see detail markers, but if I was creating construction documentation, I would want to see those detail markers. So the detail marker is used as a bit of a guide, plus it also creates a drawing, and we can choose whether we want to see that drawing or interact with that drawing or not. So let's create that marker, and when I create that marker, I'm deliberately going to make it slightly bigger than my actual bathroom. I don't want to literally draw over the edge of the walls, because if I do that, it can be hard to identify what I'm actually talking about. So we'll click to define the shape, and then we, we need to click a second time, which is defining the position of the marker head. So we can see this, this marker actually has a dashed line. And if I go into the settings of my detail marker tool, we can see that it's reduced compared to previous versions in terms of the information that it has. So we have our marker information, we have our marker text style and we have our marker symbol and text and then there's a couple more settings in this one so head geometry and style and here this is where we can see that the polygon line is now dashed I personally liked when we could make that polygon have curved edges that helped to again take away from the idea that what what does that line represent and it helped us to understand that we're talking about a detail marker we're not talking about maybe a dashed ceiling line or something over. We always have to remember that lines and text all mean something. Every time we draw a line, it should have meaning. So trying to therefore tell the story of what that meaning is can be a little bit tricky. What have I done maybe badly? I've now got a line that's going through my window marker. So I should either move my window marker maybe to the inside or I can extend using the offset tool my detail marker box so it's not creating that problem. And you can see this just goes on and on and on. No matter what I try to do, I'm always going to be competing with something. So that does make it a little bit tricky in order to be able to not end up hitting something or hitting everything. There's not a lot that we can do about that. So we just need to find the best result possible. All right, so that's created a source marker. There's three options here, a source marker, a linked marker, or an unlinked marker. Unlinked sort of makes sense. Um, it's not linked to anything. So what's the source marker? That's creating a drawing. So if I select this marker, right click, open with current view settings, it's creating a drawing. What is this drawing? It's a two-dimensional representation of my three-dimensional model. So it's taken that detailed plan or that area of my floor plan and it's turned it into lines. Now this can be useful if we then need to edit or mark up or make changes to our detailed plan and we want to do that in a two-dimensional way. However, whatever we draw in 2D of course here will not be represented either in 2D or in 3D in any other drawings. Mm -hmm. So we want to be as efficient as possible as well. What's the benefit of this? It's hidden the rest of our plans. It would be very easy now to dimension this drawing without it negatively impacting all the rest of my drawings. That's helpful. But everything else is not as helpful. So rather than using this two-dimensional drawing, which we've created here, called uh, Drawing 2 on page 6000, that's just the naming sequence that it's created, instead of using this two-dimensional drawing, what I'm going to do instead is use my floor plan, my general floor plan, and then add in as much information here as I can first, 
And then only once I feel that there's no more information that I can add, then maybe I'll start to try to hide some elements. And we'll talk more about how to do that later. So we've created a, a view. We've created a source view. And the other option of what we can do is just create that as a linked marker. Now when I choose linked marker, it says, what do I want to link to? So because I haven't really created an intentional view yet, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But what I could do, let's press cancel for now, is I could create a saved view just using the floor plan, so just using my story, but of the detailed bathroom plan just in this particular view currently. So I can go to my view map and instead of creating a saved view under my GA plans, standing for general arrangement, we're going to create one as a detailed plan. So if I scroll down, let's maybe reduce these windows just to explain how this is working. We have all of our different saved views. And this describes where all of the different types of drawings can go. If I also move across to my layout book, we can see that the layout book does something similar. It has subsections. And so I have under page 5000s, I have a potential set of layouts called detailed layouts. And that's where I want my detailed bathroom plan and my detailed bathroom reflected ceiling plan and my detailed bathroom internal elevations to live. I want to create layouts for them and I want to place drawings on those. First we need to create those drawings. Now I don't have a folder called detailed layouts at the moment. So what I can do is create a subset for these. So let's make a folder, we'll call this detailed layouts, just like we had with the layout book. And because I was selecting the 3D folder when I created it, it saved it into that folder. Now that's not really what I wanted to do. So what can I do about that? I can drag it and move it somewhere else. And I've now moved it so it's not in the sections folder, but it's sitting between the sections folder and the 3D drawings. As you're starting to create more and more drawings, you'll better appreciate the ability to save them well and have a system that works. Being able to find your information, being able to manage your information seems very tedious at first, but it's something that's well worth doing. So it's like having a filing cabinet. The more and more pieces of paper that we have, the more we realize that we need a good filing cabinet. So that's what we're doing in Archicad right now. So we have a layout folder, we have a layout, we have a saved view folder, but we don't currently have the saved view. So we need to create that from this view. Before I do this, I'm going to change this to a scale of 1 to 10. Now I will right click this save current view. And when I see save current view, I have a few other settings that I can add into this. I can choose a layer combination. I don't want my layer combination to be the same as my general floor plan because I want to be able to show some things on my detailed plan that I don't want to see on my general floor plan. So therefore I need to use layers to be able to hide that information. So I've already got a plan here called plan detail. And this is a layer combination, which means there's also layers that are turned on or layers that are turned off. We'll have a look a little bit later about what that is, but just to explain it a, bit, a little bit more simply. And I'll leave all of the rest of this information just as it is. I'm not going to change anything else for now. All that I will do is just change the name so it's easier to understand what we're talking about. Because we're, this is actually of the whole story, but I'm not actually interested in the whole story. At the moment, I'm only interested in the bathroom. So I start with bathroom. What's that done? It's hidden things. So that tells me that there's a problem with our layer combination. So let's go in and fix this. Options, element attributes, layers. So we're in our plan detail and we see that our plan detail has turned off a lot of elements. What are we missing? We're missing our fixtures. So we need to go up and turn our fixtures and joinery back on. Okay, so we see that they're now here. That's fine for now. We can go and edit that further later when we start to think through what are the other layers that we want to see, what are the other layers that we want to hide. 
So we've created a, a detailed floor plan. The next one that we want to do is create another view, but this time it's a reflected ceiling plan. So now we'll create a new saved view in the same folder. Right click, save current view. We'll use the same scale. This time we'll use the same naming sequence. So we'll customize the text, bathroom, detailed RCP. And I'm going to change my layer combination to plan RCP. Now I'm not too worried about using a detailed version of this at the moment, just the standard layer combination for that will be fine. And that, when we click on that, we'll see that it turns some of those layers back off, like the fixtures, because we shouldn't be seeing those. And it turns some layers on, things like the ceiling lining or the ceiling structure. There's not a lot to see. We haven't done much with the ceiling yet. We haven't placed elements that should be on the ceiling. So that's something that we're going to need to add into this drawing later, such as lighting, uh, maybe such as a shower head, shower row, some, whatever's mounted on the ceiling should be visible in this layer combination and therefore in this drawing. What am I missing? I haven't adjusted my setting so that some of the elements like the windows and doors are representing as a reflected ceiling plan instead of a floor plan. For instance, I shouldn't be only seeing the door like this, I should be able to see the head of the door. So I can go back into my settings, view settings, and this time I'm going to change the model view override to be RCP. There's also a graphic override RCP, so I'll change both of those. And that's now changing the representation of the window and the door to be simplified, where it's effectively just showing me the door head rather than showing me the whole thing. So we don't need to update that setting. If we go back in, we see that we've already updated that setting because we right click view setting and change these override settings here. We can now press OK. So we've now created two views. So before we go any further, let's start by placing these on the layout book just to make sure that they're actually representing the way that they should. So we'll go to our layout book, we'll go into our detailed layout settings, we'll go to our layout which is defined for this. Now I might rename this one, so I might call this bathroom detailed layout. And I will drag and drop the saved views of my floor plan and my reflected ceiling plan. I'm going to go in both settings. Make sure that we have the no title is how I want that to be set up. And I'm going to reduce the frame of this view down so it's only showing effectively my detail marker. So it's only showing just past the edges. So that's one option. Another option when I'm talking about a bathroom is I may actually not even want to show the wall structure or anything beyond the wall structure. So I might trim this down to the outside edge of my wall. Now I've seen before and I've done before a, a detailed bathroom plan that doesn't even show the wall structure. What's the problem with this? Often when we're talking about bathrooms we add in niches into the walls and if we add a niche into the wall or a pocket into the wall. The problem with not showing the wall structure is we may be hiding that niche. So I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to leave this at the outside edge of the wall. And that means even at a scale of 1 to 10, so a very large scale, I can fit two of these drawings together. Just add in that plasterboard. <coughs> and now I've aligned these so they're both in the same horizontal position. So they make sense next to each other. And we can see based on how this works, 
that I've got enough room to be able to represent both plans, but there's not enough room on this particular drawing now to represent the internal elevations as well. So if I wanted to represent internal elevations as well, I'd need to shrink these down to 1 to 20 or 1 to 25, maybe. Or I just create a second layout, new layout, and we'll call this one same sort of thing. Bathroom detailed layout. And I could call it elevations if I wanted to. Or I could simplify that and just call it bathroom internal or interior elevations. 